Hey guys, it's Charmise Aegis here and welcome back to my channel and today I will be discussing the things that I recommend having if you want to start making cold processed soap. So stay tuned. Alright guys, so for the first few items, they're going to be very highly recommended. Um, I can't say that you have to have them because according to Google, soap was invented thousands of years ago. So of course they didn't have these things, but these things make your life much, much easier. And then later on in the video, I'll just list a couple more things that you might want to have, but you know, you don't really have to have. So the first thing I would say is a soap mold of sorts. So I have so many soap molds. I have a whole cabinet of soap molds, but um this is one that i recommend now i recommend starting off with because they are very small so when you're testing batches you have a small soap mold instead of doing what i did when i started which is making a bunch of soap from a bunch of different recipes i found online and not liking any of them so a small soap mold always works and then you have your individual soap molds and then i also have like this 10 pound soap mold here from workshop heritage that i use in my business so yeah and then um those other molds actually came from amazon and you'll see the link down in the description and that is usa um so i'm not quite sure if it'll work everywhere but in that link there will be a lot of things that i just absolutely love to use all the time at the shop so <laughs> check that out but yeah so the next thing i would say is a scale so this one is a kitchen scale and it's been with me for years i absolutely love it it's it was cheap it was simple got it from amazon um yeah just a simple scale whether you uh do it in grams ounces pounds for whatever reason <laughs> you just measure it out with the scale next and we're going to get more into the safety stuff right now but i'm not going to go too far in depth because i did a whole live safety video so i'm just going to give you the items not all the description <laughs> so gloves because you got to keep those hands safe so when i'm doing big batches i like to have the dishwasher glove so like a 25 pound batch of lye or sorry of soap <laughs> and i have to mix the lye i do it with the long longer gloves because I have a tendency to do this and I don't want that lie on me. So, and then you also have your regular gloves as well, which is what I use most often. Let's see what's next. We have masks. So I have a couple different types of masks that I like to use actually. So um, when mixing lye, just depends on how much I'm mixing and where I'm mixing, but I definitely highly recommend wearing a mask, even if you're in a ventilated area. And if your mask doesn't have like the shield for your eyes, definitely wear some safety glasses or goggles or something um, because you don't want that lie in your eye. You might go blind and it's just not worth it for some soap. So wear your safety glasses. And so this part is not technically equipment, but you definitely want to wear long sleeves, long pants, closed toed shoes just to be safe. Um, so let's move on to containers now. So first up, you definitely want to have lye safe containers because this is cold processed soap and you will be mixing lye. So um, I really like this one because it has a top on it. But this one works as well when I'm doing very small batches. Um, and they both have the same symbol at the bottom, which I will put right here. Um, and if you want more information about that lye safe video, I'll put it up in the cards above. And then the next container I like, or bowl I guess, is this, these little glass bowls. Um, they're four for a dollar. I guess they're four for a dollar twenty-five now at Dollar Tree. Um, and I measure out my fragrance oil in these. I also mix um, like my colorants. So if I'm mixing, like making a clay soap, I mix my colorants in there with the uh, distilled water. And I really like using these instead of like disposable things because first of all, I don't want to have to throw things away all the time. Um, I don't want to create more waste. And uh, with fragrance oil, they will eat through certain types of plastic so I just like to use these next up you definitely want something to mix in so these are also from Dollar Tree um, and I have so many of these because they just work so well I've never had any issues with them now I'll say if they get too hot they get a little bendy but you know whatever <laughs> but yeah so something to mix in um, that's that I love these so next thing I would highly recommend are utensils, mixing utensils, uh, designing utensils, just utensils. So I have a lot of uh, spatulas, so this one did come from 
Dollar Tree, but the rest of them came from Amazon. Well, that came from Dollar Tree as well. It's just a spoon. <laughs> but yeah, these came from Amazon. So scraping out the, you know what to use a spatula for. So <laughs> spatulas, and then I also use a strainer when I'm pouring the last solution into the oils because a lot of times I do let it sit out overnight and I there's like some type of weird skin on top. I don't like it, so I strain it out. <laughs> Next thing I highly recommend is a infrared thermometer. I absolutely love these things. I think I've probably said that to everything, but anyway, <laughs> I love these things because I don't have to stick a thermometer in there. I don't have to guess to see what the temperature is. I just point and shoot, and I know exactly what the temperature is. Well around the t what the temperature is anyway. So I actually do get questions about this next one and it is a stick blender. Um, some people will ask, do you have to have a stick blender to make soap? No, you don't have to have it. Like I said, um, thousands of years of making soap, you know, these are a relatively new invention. So no, you don't have to have it, but if you ask me, you have to have it <laughs> um and definitely a detachable one because i do i have four of them and the first one i bought i didn't think i just i just heard that i needed a stick blender so i bought one didn't think about it i was like that's the cheapest one i'm buying it but i could not take the head off of it so when i go to wash it i have to just like keep this part safe and clean this part which is so much easier just throw this in the dishwasher now um and then i also have another one after i bought this one which this one's my favorite but um you can take you can take this one off and put something else on which i'll put a picture over here of that and then now i have a really big one which i guess i'll show you right now well when i said really big i didn't mean like huge but it's bigger than the other one so this is for my big batches now and so this is the other one so yeah much bigger um but yes definitely definitely recommend some type of stick blender or immersion blender or hand mixer or whatever you call it a stick blender and the last thing i highly recommend if you are doing a soap mold instead of like the individual molds i definitely recommend having a soap cutter of sorts so a knife is a soap cutter um if you just need to cut it like that then whatever but you can also have these things as well where you come down and just cut it like that but i recommend an actual soap cutter or a cheese cutter because that's what i start off with um because it's the same motion um, so a cheese cutter definitely works because I still have it in there. <laughs> but yes, a soap cutter of some type. So even with, even with this, I can put it in there and cut the soap that way. Um, but I don't know, this, this motion is just so satisfying when I cut it like that. So however you cut it, you need something to cut the soap. So these next couple of items are not strongly recommend it but they make my life easier so the first thing is actually behind me and it's an apron so um <laughs> when i'm messy basically <laughs> so when i'm making the soap i make a mess not a huge mess but there's splatters and stuff and i don't like the splatters on my clothes because they can make a stain so definitely an apron because you feel you just feel more comfortable or just some shirts that you have around like this is my soap shirt so um some shirts that you have around that you don't mind ruining because you might be messy too <laughs> And depending on what temperature you like to make soap at or, you know, if you're following a recipe, what temperature they make soap at and you want to repeat, um, I definitely recommend a microwave. So I now soap in like room temperature, so you don't really need it as much, but I also make soap with cocoa butter, so I have to melt that. So either a microwave or a double boiler, something like that. Um, next is definitely paper towels or like microfiber cloths. I have both. I actually have paper towels right here so I like to keep them handy because like I said I'm messy and of course since we're talking about cold processed soap you will need to let them cure for four to six weeks or if you make like olive oil soap then like six months but um, I recommend having a drying rack of some sort so even this bookshelf here and it's really that one back there that I let uh, the soap cure on so when I do soap for you guys like those recipes they actually cure on that um, bookshelf back there but I also have a baker's rack or bakery rack in the um, soap room where I just let them all cure because I make so much soap so I wanted to have a dedicated um, 
curing rack but a closet or a cabinet or something like that works as well. All right guys, so that wraps up my list of things that I highly recommend having when you're starting off your cold process soap journey. And then some things that I kind of recommend, you know, just a little bit less. <laughs> but if I left anything off, please put it in the comments so that you can help someone else with their journey because sometimes I forget things. And I tried not to, I think I went by everything on the list, but just put it down there if you think of something that I did not. Um, and then the last thing I want to do is shout out my people over on Patreon. Make sure you check out their links in the description because they have some bomb ass websites. So um, if you want to join my Patreon, I do have a link in the description with the different tiers. Um, I have exclusive content and then some exclusive uh, recipes as well. So make sure you check that out. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like my channel and have not subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe. And uh, yeah, peace.